Lesson 5.3, page 248 of your book, Solving Systems of Linear Equations by Elimination. In this lesson, you will learn how to solve systems of linear equations by a method called elimination. And then you'll learn how to use systems of linear equations to solve real life problems. Now, I normally don't do this, but in the book, and they're not doing anything wrong, they show you some steps to using, a, uh, using elimination to solve a system, and then they explain down here why this method works. Since some of you might have not used elimination before, I would like to be a little bit more specific than the steps they give you here. So, I decided to type this up myself, um, steps for elimination. So, if you've never done this before, these steps should make it clear what to do. So this is what I would definitely write down in your notes. And the steps here for using elimination are the following. Make, and this is an important one, and this is why the book didn't mention this, but I think it's, you have to do this first. You got to make sure both equations are written in standard form. Now a quick review of standard form is this. Standard form looks like that, where we have some number times x plus or minus, I guess I could say, some number times y equals c. You have to make sure both equations are in this form before you try to use elimination. Second step, find a variable that has the same numerical coefficients. Remember, the coefficients are the numbers in front of the variable. So find a variable that has the same numerical coefficients in both equations. You would then either add or subtract to eliminate this variable. If no variables have the same coefficients, then you'd move to step five below. We'll get to that in a minute. Step three, solve the remaining equation for this variable. And then step four, use the solution in the prior step to solve for the second variable by substituting this into the one of the equations in the system. If there are no variables that have the same coefficients from step two, you're either going to multiply one or both the equations to create this setup, and then you're going to follow these steps. Now, when I read that, if you've never done elimination before, you're probably like, this makes absolutely zero sense. Easiest thing I can do for you here is just to show you some sample problems walking through these steps. So I have a sample problem here. So let's just walk through the steps. I'm going to just check them off as I walk through them. So step one. Let's make sure both equations are in standard form. And let me see, I have negative 2x plus 3y equals 4. That's in standard form. 2x minus 1y equals negative 8. That's in standard form. So step one, I've done. Step two, find a variable that has the same numerical coefficients. So let me take my highlighter. I want you to look here at x. Do you notice how there's a 2 in front of x? They have the same numerical coefficients. Okay, I, that's what I want. So I can either add or subtract to eliminate this variable. So let's do that. When the signs are different, you can add to eliminate the variable. Let me show you what I mean. Negative 2x plus 2x would be 0. That's called eliminating. Those variables eliminated. You have to add each of these also now. 3y plus negative 1y is 2y, and 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4. So I found a variable that had the same numerical coefficients. In this case, I added to eliminate them. Okay, now step three, solve the remaining variable or remaining equation for this variable. You notice how I have a y that's left. I got to solve this. So let's do step three, divide each side by 2 y equals negative 2. Use this solution, so step 4, use this solution in step 3 to solve for the second variable by substituting this into one of the equations. So, <coughs> excuse me, let's go to the second equation. This looks kind of easy. Let's go ahead and plug a negative 2 in here and let's solve this. I would have 2x minus 1 times negative 2 equals negative 8. So this would turn into 2x plus 2 equals negative 8. I can take away the 2. 
Uh, negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. Divide by 2, and x equals negative 5. So I think my answer is negative 5 for x, negative 2 for y. Let's check it. Let's go over here and just make sure that that works. Okay. If I do this, um, negative 2 times negative 5 is 10, plus 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Is 10 plus negative 6 going to give me 4? And yes, it does. Okay, so there's my answer, negative 5, negative 2. Elimination is, a, is probably the simplest of the three methods you've learned up to this point. We've learned graphing, substituting, and now eliminating. Okay, um, elimination is very simple to use. Sometimes substitution sets up nice, so it's nice to know that method, but this is simple to use. Turn ahead to the next page, uh, page 249, and let's go to this sample problem. Because remember, there was a step 5 in my directions that I didn't get to, and step 5 applies to this, okay? So solve the system of linear equations by elimination. So let's go to the steps. Step 1, remember, make sure both equations are in standard form, and that's in standard form, and so is the second. So I'm good there. Step 2, oop, wrong direction. Step 2. Find a variable that has the same numerical coefficient. So let's look. Um, X has 10 and 5. Those aren't the same. And Y has 3 and 6. Those aren't the same. So I'm stuck. That takes me to step 5. I, gotta, I, can't, I don't have that. So go down here. If no variables have the same coefficients, either multiply one or both of the equations in the system to create this setup. Then we can go back and do these steps. So here's what that means. If I look, do you notice in the first equation I have a 3 here in front of y? If I multiplied by 2, 3 would turn into 6. Well, then I'd have 6y and 6y. Then I would have elimination. So what I can do is I can multiply the entire top equation by 2. Let's do that. So if I multiply all these things by 2, Negative 10x times 2 would get me negative 20x. 3y times 2 would give me 6y. And 1 times 2 would give me 2. The second equation, do you notice I didn't touch that? I just rewrote it. Okay, now look. Let me take my highlighter out again. Do you notice I have the same coefficient now? I got a 6 in front of the y. So since the signs are different, I can add because 6y plus negative 6y eliminate. Negative 20x plus negative 5x is negative 25x, and 2 plus 23 is 25. So let me solve this. Divide by negative 25. x is negative 1. Okay? All I have to do now is take negative 1 and plug it into one of my equations. I'll plug it into the first one here. So negative 10 times negative 1 is 10 plus 3y equals 1. Now let's solve for y. Take away the 10. And 3y would be negative 9. And divide by 3, y would be negative 3. So I think my answer is negative 1, negative 3, which you notice agrees with the book. Let's check it. Go to the second equation real quick and plug those in. Negative 5 times negative 1 for x is positive 5. And negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18. Is 5 plus 18 going to get me 23? And yes, it is. 5 plus 18 is 23. So that checks out. Okay? So that's what I mean by the step 5 down here. If you do not have elimination set up at the beginning of the problem, you can multiply one or even both of those equations to create an elimination setup. Okay? What I'm going to have you do right now is pause the video. I'd like you to try these three questions. Use elimination to solve numbers 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so you should have had an opportunity to try those. So let's take a look at the solutions for these. So in equation 1, do you notice that in front of x, I had 3. So since the signs were different, I could add. These eliminate. 6y would equal 12. I can divide by 6. Y is 2. 
I took 2 for y and I plugged it in right here. So 3x plus 4 would equal 7 and then I took away the 4 and solved. And I found out the answer was 1, 2. I quickly checked that then. I took 1 and plugged it in here. I took 2 and plugged it in here and it made this a true statement so that's definitely the answer. Let's go to number 2. Now you notice there was no elimination set up. I did not have the same coefficient in front of a variable. So I took the bottom equation and I multiplied by 3 so it turned into 9x plus 3y equals 36. Here's why I did that. Do you notice? I now have the same coefficient in front of y. Now the signs are different, so I'm going to have to add these up. So negative 3y plus 3y cancels, it eliminates. 1x plus 9x is 10x, and 24 plus 36 is 60. I can divide by 10x is 6, and then I took 6, I plugged it in right here, and I rewrote this equation, and I solved for y, and I got negative 6. Now, I think my answer is 6, negative 6. I checked it in this equation. I plugged a 6 in for x and a negative 6 in for y, and it did give me 12, so I know that's the correct response. And then the final problem. Again, you notice I do not have a coefficient in front of one of the variables that's the same. So I took the bottom equation and I multiplied by 4 because I could create 4y. So when I do that, got to multiply all of these by 4, I would get 16x plus 4y equals 52. Can you see elimination right here? I got the same coefficient in front of y. Now I got to subtract this time because 4y minus 4y eliminates. So I got to subtract all the way through now. 1x minus 16x is negative 15x and 22 minus 52 is negative 30, and then I can divide by negative 15, x is 2, and then this equation looked really simple, so I plugged a 2 in for x, 2 plus 4y equals 22, I subtracted the 2 and divided by the 4, I got 2, 5 for my answer, and I checked it in the other equation, 4 times 2 plus 5 does equal 13, so there's my solution. So elimination should be really convenient to use, especially if the coefficients aren't 1. If the numbers in front of the variables aren't 1, elimination is great to use. Elimination makes solving real life problems fairly easy too. It's just a matter of setting up the problem. So when we read this, a business with two locations by seven large delivery vans and five small delivery vans. Location A receives five large vans and two small vans for a total of $235,000. Location B, they receive two large vans and three small vans for a total of $160,000. What's the cost of each type of van? There's my unknown. Okay, so I have two unknowns. I have two types of vans, large and small. So I'll call X the price of the large van and Y the price of the small van. So let's take a look here. Location A receives five large and two small vans for a total of 235000 So 5X plus 2Y should be 235000 In the second equation, location B, they receive two large vans and three small vans for a total of 160000 so 2 large would be 2x plus 3y would be 160,000. Now do you notice here, we don't have any elimination set up, but I could set it up pretty easy right here. Let me highlight. If I multiplied the top equation by 3, this would turn into 6 right here. And if I multiply the bottom equation by 2, that would turn into 6, and I'd have an elimination set up. So let's do that. Let's multiply the top equation by 3. That's 15x plus 6y equals, um, I had to check, 705,000. And in the second equation, multiply by 2. 4x plus 6y equals 320,000. 
Well, I definitely have elimination right here. I just have to subtract. So 11x, these eliminate, would equal 385,000. I can divide by 11. And 385,000 divided by 11 works out to 35,000. So I just figured out that the large van is $35,000. Now let's get the small van. Let's just go back to this equation. This looks like it's easier. Plug 35,000 in here. 2 times 35,000 is 70,000. Plus 3y would equal 160,000. I can subtract the 70,000 from each side. So 3y would equal 90,000. And then I can divide each side by 3. It looks like the small van must be 30,000. Let's quickly check that in the first equation. I'll do it on my calculator. So I'm going to take 5 times 35,000 plus 2 times 30,000. And it better equal the 235,000. And when I press enter on my calculator, that's what I'm getting. So there's my answer. Large vans are $35,000 each. Small vans, $30,000 each. I'm going to pause the video there. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.